Since I was a little kid, I used to say, when I grow up, I'm gonna marry a guy with blonde hair and green eyes, and he's gonna be American. Oh my God, what a wild time. Not even during summer, we would stop. We were just always working. My mental health was severely affected. I barely got sleep. I barely was able to go out. I just felt very homesick. Your dad really made me tear up. Like that was such a beautiful speech. What's going on? What beautiful speech, what? So we have this great own man sobbing in front of all of the parents <laughs> i was literally embarrassed to speak english i thought that i knew english and then coming here and actually hearing people talk and talking fast i was like oh my god i, I just can't i feel dumb that broke me you know it, it was terrible i cried so 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 much but you know what at the end of the day it was just so worth it Welcome back to college. I'm your host, Zach Stevenson, and today in the classroom, we've got a guest who is extremely excited about coming on the podcast. This person loved her college experience so much, despite the very low moments that she faced. All the long hours at work and late nights finishing homework has grown her into the wonderful person that she is today. Coming from such a close family in Ecuador, it was incredibly difficult for her to say goodbye. And after shedding a few tears at the beginning, it was her heart that reminded her that she was in the right place. The experience she gained from working all her jobs at college, combined with her business and economics degree, has led her to working a dream level job at an experienced consultancy acquiring new customers. Calling from the place where it all happened, Sioux Falls, please enjoy the conversation with Denny. Denise El Savar, welcome back to college. Yeah, so excited to be back in college, Zach. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. And I think out of the people I've asked so far to jump on the podcast, I think you were the most excited. So by <laughs> default, that gets me excited too. Yeah. Oh my God. When you told me about it, I'm like, yes, this is a great idea. So I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to see the output of it as well. All righty. Well, let's jump in then. I First question, we're going to go right back. And I'm curious because you're from Ecuador. So how did you hear about Augustana? That's a great question. So Augustana. Okay. So the international advisor, he happened to go to my school. There was like a, I guess, a campaign going on in my school where universities from the United States would come over and they would like have a little booth, you know, and kind of just have all about their universities, you know, and what they were all about. So Augustana was part of it. And I basically had a huge list of all of these universities that I wanted to apply to. However, the international advisor at Augustana, he actually had a chat with my dad. So wow. because the experience was so personalized and my dad, like he's <laughs> like overprotective, you know, to the, to the T, like he like wouldn't let me go <laughs> to the U S at all. Like he was like, no, you're not going. But then when he chatted with Ben, which was the uh, international advisor, he was like, if you want to go to study to the U S you can only go to Augustana. Like that's the <laughs> only university. You're what a great to pitch. That's amazing. Well done, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So yeah, I guess um, that's how I heard of it. And that's how I ended up, you know, in Augustana, because it was my, my only choice, but the best choice for sure. Right. So and yeah. I'm curious, did you, is that kind of a normal thing that would happen from people from Ecuador to go to the US to study? That's a great question. I think that it depends, you know, I guess the school system back home, we have our private school system and then we have our public school system. I would say that it's more usual for private schools to have a international baccalaureate program where typically students are more, I guess, excited or looking for opportunities in the States. But I wouldn't say that the majority of the people would consider it or actually apply for it. For example, for my school, from my school, I think that maybe only 10 people from my class and we were 132, I believe. Oh, right. Um, 
But I mean, it's still a good amount, I think. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I don't know from those people who actually ended up in, in the States or any other country. So Yeah, okay. That's, that's very interesting. And so were you, did you maybe know before you heard about Augustana that maybe you'd like to go to the US to study? Yes, actually, this was, <laughs> I have a pretty funny story about that. Um, so since I was a little kid, like I used to say, when I grew up, I'm going to marry a guy with blonde hair and green eyes, <laughs> and he's going to be American. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I thought you were talking be- about me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I always knew I was going to end up in the United States because as a little girl, that was my dream <laughs> to marry a blonde guy. Um, American but, you know, as I, well. Yeah. <laughs> but as time went by, um, I realized, you know, that I was more curious about the studies, you know, and like having that experience, just moving out and experience what it is to be an international student. Um, so, yeah, I think that I always kind of knew that I was going to end up in the U.S so amazing that's yeah (laughs) i love that so much so and then what was that day like when the time finally came to come across and fly because how far is ecuador from sioux falls i would it's really far like to get to sioux falls you have to go from my city which is guayaquil all the way to miami so you do that first stop in miami then from miami how long is that that's four hours and a mm-hmm. half, perhaps. Yeah. Then you do a stop, you know, a layover, which is typically three hours, three to four hours, depending on how lucky you get. And then from there, you will probably go to Chicago or Minneapolis. And that's another three hour and a half flight. Isn't that crazy to think yeah. about that? that you know, um, and then... Uh, from Chicago to Sioux Falls will be an hour and the same from Minneapolis to Sioux Falls, to Sioux Falls another hour. So total, how much? <laughs> like it's like a whole 11 day? hours, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's further away than I thought because, well, Ecuador, for anyone that doesn't know, is in South America. Um, yeah. And so do you remember much about that journey when you came over for the first time? I do, actually. I do. I was very nervous. Um, it, it feels like it all went kind of quick, like from the moment that Ben Iverson, you know, I talked to my dad and then I applied for all of it. It just seemed so far away. And then in the blink of an eye, it was time to go. Um, we decided as a family to go to New York first, you know, and kind of have our last little family trip. Um, and I'm going to give a little bit of backstory to answer your question. Yeah, but, go for um, it. My family we're very close to each other. So the fact that I was going to move out of the state or out of the country, Mm -hmm. and additionally, it wasn't even going to be New York, which New York is where the father's side of the family resides at. It was a very scary moment, but very exciting for everybody. But it was just such a big deal. You know, the fact that Danny was going to leave the family. (laughs) She's following her dream to find that blonde American (laughs) with green eyes. (laughs) <laughs> that's right <laughs> so um yeah we went to new york for a couple days and then we um took a flight from new york to minneapolis on the 24th of august of 2015 um and then we took a car <laughs> so from minneapolis to sioux falls uh, my dad you know rented a car and we did that the four hour trip or five hour trip whatever that is mm-hmm. um and we got there at night. I was terrified. I was terrified. Um, definitely Sioux Falls is not what it used to be back then. I feel like it's grown a lot. Um, it felt like mostly a quiet city. Yeah. Um, and there were these weird bugs. Like when, when we opened the door of the car, there was this weird sound of like bzzz all around and these weird bugs. And then like... <laughs> <laughs> my mom, my dad, and myself, we were just staring at each other like, what is this? It was just probably a season, you know, um, or a weird time. But yeah. then we, yeah, that that was, I guess, my landing experience there. We went to the hotel, and then the next day is when we actually went to Augustana, um, which that was also a funny story. 
Do you want to talk about that? Well, like just so far, that journey by itself is crazy. And the fact that your parents came with you, I I don't know, maybe that added, made you more nervous, I would imagine, because you couldn't yeah. just leave them at home and say goodbye. Like they're kind of with you this whole time, building up to the moment where you're going to have to say goodbye to them. They're going to have to fly home. Exactly. And that even reminds me of like the time when I had to say goodbye to my brother because he went to New York, but he didn't go with us to to fall okay um so like that was a heartbreaking moment on itself um but anyways when we landed to <laughs> sioux falls and it was the day to finally go to augustana i was so nervous because i was going to meet my roommate you know and then i was going to meet the facility and all of the international students you know it was day one of the um i guess international student conference um, so we went there using the GPS. My dad had no idea on how to use the GPS back then. And here I thought I was a master, you know, like I was like, oh, turn right, turn, turn left, do this, do that. And here we are at a block, like a parking lot, which seemed to be that we were on the right spot, but we were completely lost. Like we just didn't know where to go, <laughs> what to do. And then there was this random guy. He must have been a senior at Augustana. Like, I'm not sure, but it seemed to be a senior at Augustana because he knew what, I mean, it seemed to be like he knew what he was doing. So then I asked him like, hey, do you know where the commons building is? But I probably didn't say it that word that way uh, because he's like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Probably was like, like, where do we go? Help. <laughs> <laughs> So we were just completely lost. So we did not go to that building. We ended up going to my freshman dorm, which we were able to successfully find that one. So that was good. Which dorm were you in, freshman year? Uh, it was called Bers- Bersacker Hall. Bersacker, yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny because, yeah, I think you're the first person that I've talked to who didn't sort of arrive, who wasn't from my year level. So you came the year before me, which yeah. like, so this is all completely new to me. I don't think we've even talked about this before. So that's exciting. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. And then when you got to your dorm, did you have a roommate in there already? She wasn't there yet, uh, but she was on her way. So we got there, you know, we opened the door. I'm like, oh, interesting. This is my dorm, you know, like, um, and I was just no, I'm lying to you. I did not meet her that first day. I think that that first day she was already gone. Mm-hmm. So we just went to the room. We saw how it looked like. And then we went to Walmart with my family to kind of get stuff for my room. So I met her the next day and my stuff was already like kind of decorated a little bit, you know, and um, then I don't know where we were there finishing up all the details of my side and someone knocked the door and I'm like, oh my God, it's time. And then <laughs> oh, she the time has come. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she and granted, I have been talking to her for like a while on Facebook, because we met on Facebook. Yeah. Um I, I don't know if she looked me up or I looked her up. I don't remember how that was, to be honest with you. But I do remember like when I opened the door, you know, there I see her and I'm like, oh hello and she's from colombia so colombia is really close to ecuador so we we both just gave each other a hug as if we were friends for like years you know so who, that was kind of cool. who was it her name was her name is isabella isabella villegas she was only there for a semester actually oh ah, yeah because i didn't um, meet her yeah it, it was oh my god my freshman year sack it was it was a roller coaster of emotions <laughs> and how was she so she was from colombia yeah and did you guys get along? Oh, my God, yes. We became like sisters. You know, in fact, uh, to this date, I speak to her. Um, right now, she is living in Atlanta, I believe. Okay. Um, oh, so she so stayed in the U.S. That's interesting. She left. She went back to Colombia. And then she came back because now um, she's a permanent resident now. So she's living, I think, with her dad, I think, in Atlanta. So, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. I I can't believe the journey just to get here. And then so, well, we mentioned this before, but your parents had to leave at some point. So what was that like? Oh, my God. That was another devastating moment, to be honest with you. Like, just the thought of having them leave was, like, so scary for me. Like, it almost made me really second guess, you know, and I just didn't want that to happen. 
And it made it worse to know that before, you know, they had kind of like a scheduled time to leave. It was like at 2 p.m. after the conference. They had a parents conference for international students. And when everyone was out of the conference, people were like, oh, my God, your dad really made me tear up. Like, that was such a beautiful speech. And I'm like, what's going on? What beautiful speech? What? (laughs) So then I don't remember who told me, but oh, yeah, it was Isabella's mother. So my roommate's mother told me all of the details where literally my dad like said that he had something to say and then he gave all of this speech about me and how much he loves me and that oh I'm his goodness. daughter and to please take care of me. So we have this grown man like sobbing in front <laughs> of all of the parents. <laughs> so, you know, like I have rarely seen my dad cry. So to know that that happened and he was very vulnerable, that broke me, you know, and to know that you know, just a few hours after that, he was going to have to take the rental car and go back to Minneapolis. It was terrible. I cried so, so, so much. And I was, yeah, yeah. That's That's, (laughs) that's so wild. I think because, I mean, it is a huge deal, but just to send your daughter off to some other country just to study for four years as well. It's not a short time. Exactly. And the thing with that, too, is that we knew that from the moment they left, I was not going to see them until next year. And again, like being such a close family, like, you know, always together, the fact that you're not going to see your dad or your mom or your brother and sister for a whole year is like, wow, you know, unbelievable. We've always spent Christmas together, New Year's Eve together. That's Those are pretty major holidays back home, you know. So thinking that I wasn't going to be there for the first time was just, you know, heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah. So, Man. Yeah. And so what was freshman year like then for you? Yeah. So freshman year, I would say it was like a roller coaster for me. So with that... You know, being at Augustana, I knew that it was probably going to be a little bit of a different experience for me because I was able to get a scholarship, but and at the same time, my dad was going to be able to help me a little bit uh, when it comes to the financials of it, but I needed to take care of many other things as far as like tuition goes. So like most of my time in freshman year was spent studying and working studying and working yeah yeah i would say like i love augustana i love the people there but i would say that my freshman year was probably it it could have been better i wish that i didn't have to work so much uh because that didn't give me the opportunity to really make friends so my friend was literally you know my roommate and another person um i didn't really get to spend you know and kind of get to know about the culture and the people and have american friends like i wouldn't say that i had american friends my freshman year not because of them at all it was because of me you know the circumstances that i was in just didn't really allow me to be that sociable person you know to actually go out and and do things because i was just doing other things you know priorities at at that time so yeah. well, that's and that's a big part of it too, because it's college is not cheap, and I think <clears throat> um, Augustana does provide plenty of scholarship and financial aid opportunities, but even so, it's still, yeah, kind of just looking at the prices for what it would be for a four year tuition is ridiculous, really. Um, exactly. And so, like, yeah, you're one of those students who had to very much work and study to be able to afford the opportunity. I think exactly. the yeah well because even even the years after your freshman year after once I got there you were busy either being um, like a hall monitor or um, just doing other works I've actually got that might be a good thing to bring up I have a photo of you which I'll show you now which I to me this photo is kind of interesting for a few reasons but I'll just show it to you and see what you think do you remember this Let's see the old Navy crew. Oh my god! <laughs> so this was this would have been. So we're jumping forward a little bit. This would have been sophomore year for me. So this was the first time I saw you and Andrew, who we haven't introduced yet. 
but that was the first time I saw you guys after that um that summer break. So you were heading into your junior year, um, and Andrew and I were heading into our sophomore years. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I remember that Andrew and I we used to work for All Navy. You know, again, like yeah. my whole time such, at Alexander, I was, such a great yeah. store as well. I bought lots of stuff from there. Yeah, yeah. So it wow, wow, that picture, like I can't believe it. Like I don't remember seeing that ever. So you had it hidden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I thought because it was just so interesting for me, and that photo kind of does capture a lot because we'd gone through. Like I'd gone through my freshman year and we'd spent all this time together because we became friends pretty early on. And then I remember we had, yeah, a lot of people go home for summer break. I went home, but you stayed um, in Sioux Falls and you were you were just spending the summer working. And I remember just coming back and that photo kind of captures just how much we'd kind of grown over that time. I uh, agree completely. Yeah. yeah. I mean... I remember that summer, you know, and it wasn't only Old Navy. We were doing um, Learn to Swim. We were Learn to Swim instructors for kids at the Elman Center. (laughs) 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 Oh, my God. What a wild time. I swear, like, not even during summer, we would stop, you know. We were just always working and just really trying to, like, complete our goals to be able to afford school. But you know what? At the end of the day, it was just so worth it. When I look back... At that, and even Andrew and I, when we talk about those experiences and we see where we are now, the positions that we have now, the experience that we have been able to get from that, it's just so, I don't know, gratifying, you know? Absolutely, Um, yeah, because you, like, well, you and Andrew, but you in particular, like, you are extremely hardworking. And, I mean, you obviously don't maybe have like the luxury to be like well i can't afford not to work i have to just get stuck in and do it but that's exactly what you do you just get busy you find interesting opportunities you try you've tried a wide variety of stuff of work options since you've been in the us as well has there been what other kind of jobs have you had yeah so okay so when i was at augustana kind of a few jobs that i had there was uh, I was a resident advisor, so I was able to, you know, get the the dorm technically for free by yeah. being a resident advisor and helping, you know, the students, you know, with roommate conflicts and, you know, oh, I lost the key to my to my door, help me, <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, and then I was also a supervisor at the Elman Center, which was the recreational services facility at Augustana. That was like the best job ever at Agustana. I feel like I learned so much, you know, made some really amazing connections. Um, I had a great leader, like our boss or our leader. Um, his name was Mark Heck. I know yeah. you know him. Absolute well, legend, that guy. Uh, we might have to get him on the show, surely. Let's get oh Mark my God. Heck in yes. here. Yes, yes. Um, one of like the core values of being a a um employee at the Elman Center was to have a servant heart, create wow experiences, and oh my God, I'm forgetting the other one. And I literally just had all of it in my head. <laughs> but those leadership skills stay with me forever, you yeah. know? Uh, but also, I, I worked at the cafeteria. You know, I was doing stir fry, That's rap. Right. Yeah. Oh, I remember that now. Hours. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Oh my God. Uh, you know, learn to swim program, being an instructor. I was a circuit way instructor yeah. and a CrossFit or yeah, CrossFit <laughs> instructor, <laughs> kind of a Zumba instructor. Oh my God. I did all well, that's sorts. So of much experience. That's absolutely incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was, uh, you know, odd Augie. But then after that, I was able to get, you know, my business and economics degree and I entered the life of customer service in the insurance world. And I did that for four years. And a year ago, uh, I, made a, I made a really big move. And I was able to get a job at Bottle Rocket Studios, their headquarters in Dallas. Uh, I'm a business development coordinator there. And my God, I love it. I love that company. My goodness, I love the people. I love what we do. It's just so exciting. So, yeah, you've, you've, kind of a long answer. Yeah. No, that's great. We... um. You've spoken to me about that job at Bottle Rocket before, but for maybe someone who doesn't know, what do you do there? 
Yeah, so we actually we're an experienced consultant consultancy, and what that means is that we create custom apps and websites. You know, it's really tailored to what people nowadays you know expect from their mobile devices. You know, sometimes you have your Starbucks of the world, you have your Coca Colas of the world, your Chick Fil A's of the world, worlds, and you have all of these digital experiences. And you're like, oh, you know, this app is so cool. You can do this and that. And then when you open the app of another company, you're like, wait, what? This is not the same experience I'm having. So we're kind of, you know, that company that sets the bar for those digital experiences. Um, and I'm, you know, the business development coordinator. So I help kind of getting prospects and talking to inbound leads, doing outbound, helping marketing, doing all of those things to kind of get get stuff in the in the pipeline or in the funnel of the sales process so i hope that that gives a little bit of an overview yeah that sounds so awesome i'd love to have a job like that it sounds super interesting oh my god i love it i really do i learn i learn every day at this job i really do so i'm happy fantastic and then so back to your degree you just you mentioned it so you finished with what was your official degree uh Bachelor of Arts in Business and Economics. And that's obviously served you pretty well then. <laughs> yes. Yeah, especially in this, you know, recent job that I that I got. Um, that's really, you know, the the field where I want to be at. I'm not saying insurance wasn't. I think I learned a lot from insurance. In fact, like I would say insurance was able to finally get me to not be so concerned about my English. Not saying I'm not concerned about it now, but <laughs> in the past, I used to be way more concerned. Like, actually, another reason why I probably didn't make much friends in my first year, freshman year, is because I was literally embarrassed to speak English, mm. you know? that um, I don't know if I've told you this before, but I was embarrassed to speak English because I just felt like I really couldn't communicate well. Oh, really? You know, so... Well, yeah, and I was going to ask you about that because Ecuador, Spanish-speaking country, so you've obviously had some problems that you've run into coming to an English-speaking country. Yeah, and you know what? It's interesting because I went to a bilingual school. It was actually called the American School of Guayaquil. Yeah. So I, you know, started that school when I was four, and it was the same school throughout, you know, graduation in high oh, school. Oh, really? That's yeah. a long time to be at the same school. Yeah. And <laughs> and it's just interesting because I thought that I knew English and then coming here and actually hearing people talk and talking fast, I was like, oh, my God, I, I just can't. You know, I, I can't communicate. I don't know what people are saying. I feel dumb. You know, it was, <laughs> my oh, my God, I, I can't even explain <laughs> yeah. how concerned I was. Yeah. I mean, someone like me, I didn't have to deal with that. Um, it was probably almost the opposite. I think I would be talking to a lot of Americans and they would say that I'm talking too fast. They don't understand me. And there'd be some Aussie slang that I'd throw in there. They're like, mate, what are you talking about? Or they wouldn't say mate, but they just <laughs> look at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Who is this guy? So, but obviously that doesn't even compare to what it would be like having to speak a completely different language. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, that's, probably one of the biggest challenges that I had throughout school, you know? Um, and I think my English has gotten better a hundred percent, like compared to 2015 to now. Your English is and amazing think, now. Oh, thank you. I don't think, I don't think about it that way. I yeah. still feel like, you know, I struggle and have a pretty thick accent and sometimes I speak really fast. <laughs> um, but I appreciate that. <laughs> I really do. And it wasn't even like I never considered you as someone that struggled with English either. Um, oh, wow. But I think because, well, I mean, just for a comparable experience, I went to Germany when I was in the 11th grade, so I would have been 17 um, for 10-week exchange. And, like, I really didn't know much German. And I don't think I spoke hardly any German when I was there because I was just way too scared to. So I can only imagine being dumped in a four-year college having to try and speak a different language i know right tough. without my family <laughs> all alone all by myself <laughs> <laughs> literally yeah Bye. so and you mentioned freshman year you didn't have a lot of american friends but did you make some international friends 
Oh, yeah. I, I would say I made a pretty good deal of international friends, specifically Ecuadorians. Really? Uh, I think I sent you a picture, actually, of us with the Ecuadorian flag, and it was like an Ecuadorian crew. Um, yeah, we used to hang out a lot, and we would make, like, Ecuadorian nights and kind of cook Ecuadorian food. Um, so... That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, also friends from Ethiopia. I remember, what else? Um, well, of course, my roommate from Colombia, my best friend, freshman year, one of my best friends, freshman year. Uh, his name is Eduardo. I know you know him. Yeah. Um, he is from Honduras. So that's that. So yeah, definitely from all over the wor world, I would say. Yeah. It's. Yeah. That's amazing that you can have such a strong, um, yeah, just a strong shared culture from people um, from, yeah, South America, Latin American, whatever you, um, the term is. But you guys are just kind of, yeah, dumped in the US, but you can all find each other and gravitate to one another to kind of help yourselves through some of those tougher times. Exactly. Yeah. And to this date, you know, like I was saying, I still speak with or chat with uh, Isabella. And also I speak with Eduardo, you know, like he's like a brother to me. He actually used to be my roommate for years and years. And he just recently, well, a year ago, moved to New Orleans, but we still speak every day. So up till this date in this difficult, in any difficult time, you know, he's still there. Uh, so it's interesting and just incredible to see the friendships that just remain, you know, and probably will remain forever. And like you and I, you know, I know that we probably don't chat a lot because there's, you know, the time difference, but still, like, I always think about you, you know, and sometimes we, we have opportunities to, to talk and it, it's just great. So. That's so sweet. And I think, <laughs> I mean, I, I always am thinking about you and all the, all my other friends from Augustana because you guys are the best friends that I've ever had. And we had some incredible times together. We did. We did. Um, Sometimes I wish we had a time machine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to, I've got a photo that you sent me and I'm just curious to hear you sort of describe what's in this photo. Yes. Okay. So that was the first time ever building a snowman. <laughs> 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 that was freshman year as well. It was probably around maybe November. I will be lying if I know all the time. Or maybe it was not November. Maybe it was January. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, there, either or, there'd be plenty of snow by that time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, we just, I received a message uh, on Facebook, a group message. Um, there was this guy, his name was Dan. He was like, hey, we're going to, you know, hang out with all international friends. Uh, I was wondering if you want to join. sounds like Dan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, sure, why not? And, you know, I went there and then we made, we were playing with snowballs. We had a snowball fight. And then we ended up uh, making that, that snowman, which I feel like we baptized, baptized him uh, Enzo. Or maybe I'm lying. Maybe I'm making this up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but good. that was so fun. <laughs> yeah. Had you, does it snow in Ecuador? N not where I'm from. There's a little bit of snow, like, in the mountain area, but, like, very little um, and very, like, away. But it's not like it snows, like, U.S. snow. You so know? had you ever seen snow before you got to Augustana? Yes, I had seen snow because I have family that lives in New York and I used to visit them every summer. Okay. Um, like summer for, for Ecuador is sometimes winter time, you know, All here. right, yeah. So, oh, because you're yeah. in the southern, southern hemisphere. Yeah, so like um, I used to visit them in February, you know, February, March, and that's still kind of snowing in the in the U.S., so. Yeah. yeah. Well, the... um. Any comments about the winters in Sioux Falls? Oh, <laughs> the winters in Sioux Falls. Oh, Lord. I would say, you know, I remember, I don't know who it was, but they were like, right now you're happy with the snow because it looks fluffy and you're playing with it, but you just wait when it gets all dirty and then you fall and then you have to like be careful oh, yeah there's you know, ice everywhere 
There's eyes everywhere, and I'm like, oh no, I don't think so. I this love is this. Magical. Yeah, I don't think so. Like this look, it looks like Santa Claus is going to be with us all winter. Like this looks magical. <laughs> and then fast forward six months, and it's still everywhere. It's still freezing cold. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's windy. Right. <laughs> Windy, my skin hurts. I've never had that happen to me where my skin hurts from how cold it is. Yeah. You know? It's ridiculous. So I actually, oh my God, I wish I had the picture. I think I may have it on Facebook. But that first winter, I got my first iPhone and I fell and broke the screen. <laughs> oh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was so sad. So yeah, that that's winter for me. I mean, it was a real hazard just trying to walk around because yeah, there's ice everywhere, and you often just don't even see it. Exactly, exactly. But you know what? Um, but you, you still you still live in Sioux Falls, so obviously I, you've learned how to put up with it. I do, but I still complain. <laughs> I feel like I'm always going to complain about, you know, the winter time. But yeah, you know, you learn how to live with it. You learn how to buy good clothing. Like I was very naive my time in school and had like the worst winter gear ever, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. I have another photo and I remember this one because I'm in it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. What were we doing? Weren't we at the movies? Yeah, well, I mean, you can see him in the back, Doctor Strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah Doctor Strange. Oh, I remember that. What do you remember about that group of people? Amazing group of people. My goodness, that was your freshman year, yeah. right? That was my um sophomore year. I feel like, to be honest with you, I feel like that group of people brought light to my life. Like, I was so homesick. My roommate had left me, you know, just a semester, not not even by the end of the first semester, and she was already gone. You know, I was in a room alone, you know, and she was mostly the person that I used to speak the most with uh, during my freshman year. So I feel like that group, it just brought so much light to my life, you know, like especially you, Andrew, like Andrew was from, is from Ecuador too. Yeah. So, you know, oh my God, like it just changed the whole picture, you know? And I remember that we used to do a lot of movie nights together. We used to like go to the uh, cafeteria every lunchtime. Like we would just sit together <laughs> and eat and dinner time. We were a family, you know, yeah. if you think about it, like every day, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, most of the time we were having those moments together. And then come weekend time, we were like, okay, what are we doing this weekend? Like are, what activities are we engaging with? You I know, think, like, um, Dan was probably the, I guess you could probably call him the father or the group leader, or <laughs> probably a better term would be a mother because he's got the big seven-seater van, the soccer mom. He just pulls up, so, oh, all the international students jump in. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's worth it to mention that Dan was like American and yeah. then he was like the one American with all of the international students. Yeah, we're students. like, what do we do? And then Dan's like, come on, let's go. Let's go do something. Yeah. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Oh my god. Swing yeah, his I keys on his um little keychain thing. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. He's always he's not stressing about about doing homework. He's stressing about what are we gonna do on the weekend? How are we gonna have some fun? Oh my god, do you remember the the song Saki Baby? I really, really, really like you. <laughs> That's a damn special. Yep, of course I remember that. <laughs> That song was stuck in my mind for years. <laughs> <laughs> Still is, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that that's the, the overview. It's just a group of light, you know, that I will never forget. So. Well, because I, yeah, I remember quite well hanging out with, because it was a reasonably big group we had, um, oh, yeah. but we would just do all sorts of stuff together. Yep, yep. And I think I still maybe have the first group chat that we open on Facebook. I think. I think. Really? I'm not sure. Yeah. Is it so, is it called anything in particular? Do we have a nickname I, for it? <laughs> you know, let me see if I can even find it super quickly. Maybe I don't. I think it was like 
I, I think it was in Spanish even because I think I created the group oh, chat okay. and then I probably named the brothers or something like that. I don't have it. I, I am all the way down. I don't have it. But I remember having it. I probably deleted everything. <laughs> Not on purpose. I was probably just, I don't know what I was doing. But <laughs> yeah. Now I have another photo, which is not quite the same group. It's actually, there's more Americans in this one. I don't know if you can see that. But do you remember what this night was? Was it the end of my freshman year? So end of your sophomore year, I believe. Oh my god! We we're yeah. at some party in a barn. I can't remember exactly what that was, but do you? I don't really. Re I remember the picture, but I don't remember what it was. No, I will be lying to you. I think it might have even just been someone throwing an end of year party. I think, and and out in a barn in the middle of nowhere, which is what you do in Sioux Falls. That's how you throw a proper party. <laughs> like. Um, what am I wearing there again? Because I remember one time we went to a senior party at a um, barn looking thing. That's what it was, that? I'm pretty sure. You've got a pink top on. Okay. Oh, that's you. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was the graduation party of someone, I believe. Yeah, good chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Barely, but I remember. <laughs> I remember that the barn, like upstairs, was the disco area, and then yeah. downstairs was the play area. I remember yeah. that with lots of food and all sorts of stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Different planet over there. They just party oh, yeah. differently. Yeah, um, that's for sure. So we haven't really talked too much about. I mean, what college is essentially is like the schooling part. So did you start off as a? like with the majors that you finished with? I did. I started with business and economics. I actually had a minor, but like probably for maybe a semester or two, a communications minor, and then I decided against it. Yeah. Uh, but my main two majors were business and economics, and I did end up, you know, just following through that. And I, yeah, I like it. I enjoy it. I enjoy the classes met some pretty amazing professors and I loved the system that Augie had at that time. It made it a pretty seamless experience for me. Yeah. Did you have a favorite class, either business class or maybe something else? I would say my two favorite classes were economics with Professor Reynold Nesiva mm -hmm. and then English with Dr. Gerling, Dr. Danny Gerling. Those were probably my two favorite professors. Uh, at Augustana. I don't yeah. think I had either of them. I've heard of Dr. Gerling. His name gets thrown out quite a lot as being a good professor. What was so good about oh, him? Yeah. Uh, he is just such a genuine, happy, caring professor. You know, like he's just on top of everything. And he just, like when sometimes, you know, when you think of school, you're like, oh, I have to go to this class and listen to the lecture and take notes. And then I'm going to have homework. And then you know, sometimes when you're demotivated, I guess. But like with him, it was like you were looking forward to being in that class because he will start with like, hey, what did you guys do yesterday? How was the weekend? Like he will try to relay with us and connect and then we'll get into the class. And it was just a good pace. And, and the homework felt like fulfilling even, you know, doing the type of homework that he was sending and the feedback that we will get, you know, with the grades. I don't know. I, I, it, it was just so much about him that, was really great um that just a I real just genuine person yeah very genuine person so who was yeah. actually interested in the students he was teaching not just getting through the material and hoping everyone gets decent grades exactly <laughs> exactly so i am forever grateful to have taken that class <laughs> so what was your least favorite class Ooh, that is a great question. Okay, my least favorite class was probably calculus. <laughs> I did not like that class. I don't even know how I passed it. it because I didn't drop it, did I? I don't think I dropped any classes <laughs> in school. But um, 
Yeah, I I remember crying one time in front of the professor and saying, hey, I'm trying everything. I study. I just cannot understand. Like, I remember doing that. He was just staring at me like, calm down, lady. It's not the <laughs> end of the world. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was it for sure. Yeah, I think that's <clears throat> that's a pretty typical answer. Just calculus and well, yeah, anything to do with math. Um, unless you're kind of mathematically inclined, well, yeah, calculus ain't going to be too pretty. Yeah, exactly. So not my favorite for sure. Will not recommend <laughs> for people that don't like math. <laughs> so if you could give your whole experience at Augustana a letter grade, what would you give it? Oh, my goodness. That is just such a great question because I feel like I would grade different components a different letter, but you know, given you're saying the whole overall experience, ah, uh, that's tough. I want to say an A, just mm -hmm. because, you know, like you kind of said earlier, like we didn't really talk about the education, but we talk about all of the experiences. You know, what what college was really, you know, it's yeah. the experiences, the people you you meet, and the things that you learn, and like what you had to go through in that moment of your life. So I feel like when like talking about it and like just thinking about that when I wasn't really thinking about it yesterday, you know, and like remembering all of that, it's like, wow, you know, there were some really valuable lessons learned, some really amazing friends that I made, uh, regardless of the pain, because throughout college, I had a lot of pain, you know? Um, so because of that, I will give it an A. <laughs> yeah. So fantastic. Yeah, that's that's a very good response. And I and you're so right too, because I remember maybe just the a handful of classes, but it's everything else outside of the classes, all all the people, the activities that we do, the um like the breaks that we have, fall break, spring break, the winter break, all those and like whether we decide to just like stay in the basement and you know cook some food from home or we decide to adventure somewhere else and do some other activities i think those are all the experiences that really stand out and what make college college essentially yeah exactly exactly i couldn't agree more so definitely. so would you go back again then i would i really would and you know i would go back and make it even better you know like how would you do uh, that like, I'll probably try to, like, if I knew, like, that it's important, you know, to, like, maybe not work full time and study full time, I will probably try to have a chat with my dad and see if there's any possibility where he could help me maybe a little bit more. Um, He's always liked to challenge me, and I am very grateful of that. But maybe if there was a little bit more help, um, maybe I could have made more friends in that freshman year uh, and really get to know the American culture and the American people, because to be honest with you, throughout the whole four years, uh, even though I was able to uh, have a career at the Elman Center and speak with a lot of American people, I don't feel like I had American friends per se. Uh, so I feel like I missed out on that, mm. you know? So I feel like it would, I will go back to have that experience, to hang out with them more, you know, learn about what they like, what they do and things like that. So yeah, that's what, what I would do. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Is there, as we're winding up here, is there anything, any moments, any memories that you have that you would like to share? Uh, let's see. Yes, actually. Um, do you remember Nene being the, <laughs> Nene, my dog, mm -hmm. uh, being able to live with me at the dorms? Yes. Uh, that yeah. was a fun experience. <laughs> So let me talk about that because that's kind of cool <laughs> to it. think about. Okay, so, you know, with college, you have really good experiences. Uh, but at the same time, like I said before, you go through a lot of pain and sometimes, you know, uh, mental health, like that's very important. I think that there was a moment in my college life where I, I felt overworked. You know, I was working too much and I barely got sleep. I barely was able to go out, you know, I was just too busy and I just felt very homesick as well. Um, I feel like I wasn't able to like really achieve the goals and be like an A plus in my work and in school. Like 
I felt like I needed to choose to be an A plus in one thing. Yeah, and for sure. it was just a lot of it was a lot of pressure. So my mental health was, I would say, severely affected. Um, and there was a kind of a really crazy moment of something that happened to me where I was like, oh my God, like I need, I need help. And I seeked help actually. And they were like, Hey, you know, I think that maybe uh, something that will be good for you will have, will be having an emotional support animal, you know? So without having any approval from the school, I went to this pet place and I bought a mini dachshund who is still here with me to this day. And I yeah. had it. Oh my God. I hope no one like, no, I, I guess what can they do to me now? But yeah, I had it hidden oh in the dorms. I remember I that. That was so much fun. It's like, I've got this cute little puppy that no one's supposed to know about, but come and come and say hi to him. Exactly. So that was, oh my God, what a moment. And then I remember that when it was the time to get the decision of whether or not I could have a emotional support animal at the dorms, even though I already had it at the dorms, the person in charge actually denied it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a problem now. I started crying. I was like, no, this cannot be the case. I need this approved. And it's funny because I said, um, and I don't know if this is actually what my dad told me. I think maybe I made it up. <laughs> I know. I think he did tell me something like this, but maybe I made it a little bit more dramatic because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just sad and, you know, just disturbed that I wasn't approved. Yeah. I was like, hey, you know, if if I'm not able to have this accommodation, then I'm going to have to go back home and I won't be able to finish <laughs> my studies. <laughs> and then like, just like that, the, 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 the person in charge was like, oh my God, you know, like let's talk oh, about don't do that more. you're staying yeah, here. No. <laughs> don't do that stop. <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about this let me see the full report again we'll reevaluate and then she reevaluated approved mr nene and yeah that's that's one of uh uh the risky a risky thing that i did there but it, it was a fun experience i love how you just you just jumped in to get him regardless like this is happening i'm getting a dog <laughs> whether yeah. i'm allowed to or not is another story but i'm gonna have him and keep him hidden in the dorms <laughs> exactly oh my god i can't believe i did that but um you know uh i That's had so to. <laughs> so cheeky of you <laughs> yeah and oh my god another funny part about this is like when i went to the pet store um i saw him and he just looked so sad Aww. you know because they had just taken away his sister Uh, if I remember correctly. And then he was just so sad. And I'm like, oh, my God, you look so sad. I am sad. Let's be sad together. (laughs) Come here, beautiful. (laughs) Come here, beautiful. (laughs) So funny. But, yeah, that's that's one of the stories that I have for you. (laughs) That's an amazing story. And final question, if you could give any advice to someone who is maybe thinking about coming from another country to college in the US, what would you what advice would you give to them? That's a great question. I would say get out there, you know, like really take initiative to meet people. Uh don't wait for people to come to your door, but rather you take that initiative because um as much as you are scared, people are also scared. Um, and sometimes, you know, when you are the person that it's, you know, international and they don't know you, you know, and they already are in their comfort zone, it's, it's probably unintentional, but it's easier for them to, you know, kind of already be comfortable with Americans, you know. So take that initiative to say, hey, this is Denny. I'm from Ecuador. This is who I, this is what I'm all about, you know, because um, you will miss out. If you don't do that, you know, if you just wait for people to come to you, you're probably going to miss out. Um, so that will be my my one ab- advice. Go out there, talk to people, make connection, make memories um, and just live it day by day and enjoy the most that you can. So perfect. That's an amazing answer. I think with that, we'll end it. Denise, thanks for joining me on Back to College. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it.